G'day everyone and welcome to the channel. My name's Harry. I do videos about cryptocurrency, personal finance, making money, entrepreneurship, and even lifestyle videos. So be sure to subscribe, especially if you're into crypto because I've got a lot of cryptocurrency videos coming up. Today, we're talking about liquidity and what needs to happen in the crypto space to really take it to the next level of mass adoption. And that will lead on to talking about the Tokamak crypto, which is a project aiming to solve the current state of liquidity shortcomings. Now, how the Tokamak token works is quite technical. I had to go through several articles and watch several other videos just to have a little bit of an understanding. Videos about how constant product market makers work, how liquidity pools work, how Olympus DAO works. By delving into liquidity and Tokamak, you'll open up a pan Pandora's box of things you need to learn within the crypto space. But I've tried to summarize and pull out some key points so that you'll have some understanding that you can then go and research further if need be, or just understand a little bit so you know when something new happens in the space, you can be all over it. That all being said, let's look at liquidity and Tokamak. This is the Tokamak token. You can see the price is $55. It's pronounced Toka, Toka or Toka. And let's look at what the price has done for all time. Started at about 20 bucks and now it's at about 55 and it hit an all time high of around 76. There's quite complicated and technical ideas within this. And I think learning about what the Tokamak token does and about the next phase of liquidity will put you in a great position to understand which projects to get into when new liquidity projects pop up. So let's just start where I started and it was with this article that was sent to me a few days ago from Bankless, the Bankless newsletter. Now, the fact that the Bankless newsletter is covering this, they may be an investor in this project, so keep that in mind. But like I said, whether you decide to invest in this token or not, you will learn a lot. So liquidity is bandwidth. Web3 still needs its broadband moment. So what do they mean by that? They draw an analogy to the internet. The internet of communication relied on data bandwidth. First, we had dial-up and that allowed for email and websites. But then once we got broadband internet, we could use things like streaming, Netflix, YouTube, social media, et cetera, et cetera. Well, they're saying Web3 is in the same position and that liquidity is the new bandwidth. The problem is that we're still in the dial-up phase. Liquidity is fragmented, inefficient, barriers to entry, and primitive solutions like liquidity mining. Why is liquidity mining primitive? I made some notes here. When new tokens are released, they have to have really high APYs. There's sell pressure, impermanent loss, the rates drop, and investors leave. So that is what they're talking about. In the article, they explore the concept using Tokamak as an example, and that is what I'm doing in this video as well. So let's skim over and pick out the good bits. So bad liquidity. Bad liquidity is any liquidity where you lose a significant amount of value when you interact with it. This means that thin liquidity is bad liquidity. If you have an asset that's worth $10, like fairly it's worth $10, but there's no one willing to buy it, you might have to accept lower $8, $7 to sell it. And here's the example. Instead, you walk away from the trade with only 8 XYZ due to thin liquidity. On the other hand, good liquidity is any liquidity where you retain most of your value when you interact with it. Deep liquidity. Then they go through a few more examples, but the core in Web3, liquidity equals bandwidth. Once the liquidity issue is solved, the decentralized economy will truly be unleashed and they can't even foresee what sort of applications there will be. One example that stuck out for me was when they were talking about loans. First, think about how challenging it is for an individual in a developing country to obtain a loan to buy a house. In most cases, the banks either do not exist or the individual does not have access to the system. In the new world of democratized finance with deep liquidity bandwidth, the individual's cash flows could be verified on chain and lenders all over the world could offer a loan or mortgage to this individual on demand. Smart contracts could check the capital flows and verify the individual's on-chain activity instantly and flow capital to the person's wallet the very moment they ask for the loan. So that's just one application of having a system where liquidity is solved. 
Okay, there's a few articles that actually go into Tokamak and how it works. So we're going to pick one and dive in. And I think we're going to use this crypto briefing article to explain. So the key takeaways, Tokamak is an emerging protocol that aims to offer deep and sustainable liquidity to DeFi projects. Mm -hmm. Using Tokamak, DeFi projects can reduce the costs for securing and sourcing liquidity by three to four times. For liquidity providers, people like you and me that can deposit our tokens in Tokamak, Tokamak provides higher yields and impermanent loss protection through single-sided staking pools, meaning you don't need to combine Ethereum with an, with Tokamak to earn your rewards. You only need one cryptocurrency. Tokamak is DeFi's first liquidity as a service product. Tokamak reactors can help projects reduce their cost for securing and spending liquidity by roughly three, or four, three to four times. Eventually, the project is aiming to become a fully fledged liquidity sourcing and management protocol that allows developers to build their projects without worrying about liquidity. So according to this, DeFi project founders can spend anywhere between 25% and 75% of their timeshare on issues concerning liquidity sourcing, management, and market making. On top of that, projects pay an average of around $1.25 in their native tokens for every $1 of liquidity secured. The three functions that traditional market makers typically centralize are capital provision, strategic market knowledge as to what and where assets can be traded, and trading technology and expertise to price the assets. Rather than centralizing these three functions, Tokamak disaggregates and crowdsources them across the blockchain. Tokamak is effectively a decentralized liquidity provider. Like centralized market makers, it executes the same three functions, but it segregates the task to three separate participants. These three participants are the liquidity providers that bring capital into the system, the liquidity directors that manage where liquidity needs to flow, and the prices that provide trading and asset pricing information when the liquidity needs to go to order book or request for quotation-based exchanges. Prices are excluded from the process when liquidity goes to automated market maker based exchanges as the protocols themselves use an algorithm to price the assets. From a systems architecture standpoint, Tokamak is split into two parts, the Genesis pools and the reactors. The Genesis pools represent single-sided globalized pools where liquidity providers can add ETH or USDC which the reactors can draw upon to provide double-sided liquidity on different trading venues across the crypto market. These are called globalized pools because ETH and USDC are the most common assets paired with each other, paired with other tokens to bootstrap liquidity pools across automated market makers. This is kind of what they're referring to. You got the TOKE pools, the TOKE ETH liquidity pools, and you got the pair reactors, and you've got the token reactors is what you've got here. Now, one thing to notice is these, where these lines are, where these colors is how much there is the balance. And when the balance goes out of whack, these percentages change to incentivize movement into other pools. So here, this is 30%. Why would you keep your token here to make 30%? You want to move it into other pools, right? These are all the different cryptocurrencies that have these pools. Okay, so one simple way to understand how Tokamak works is to focus on single reactors. To provide $20 million worth of liquidity in the ETH Aave pool on Uniswap, on Uniswap, for example, the Tokamak protocol would take $10 million worth of Aave tokens from the Aave reactor and match it with $10 million worth of ETH from the ETH Genesis pool and then automatically deposit the liquidity on Uniswap. Liquidity directors are responsible for deciding whether the same liquidity should be paired with ETH or USDC as well as the decentralized exchange it gets deposited to. Liquidity directors accrue voting power based on the amount of TOK they've staked in the system. That creates buying pressure for TOK because the more TOK you stake in the reactor, the more voting power you get. So that creates upward pricing pressure. To improve its 
To improve its effectiveness as a liquidity utility, Tokamak leverages Toki emissions as rewards for liquidity providers and liquidity directors to balance the reactors. When asset supply is limited, the asset APY increases to encourage more deposits. So here we've got plenty of Toki, but not enough Aave. So we've got 65% APY. So people would deposit Aave in here. The goal is to get to what we call the singularity, which is the moment where we have enough protocol controlled assets that we don't even need the third-party liquidity providers. So at that point, you have this liquidity infrastructure that provides liquidity and already has enough assets itself to provide that liquidity bandwidth across DeFi. This is where the idea of seeing liquidity as infrastructure crystallizes. Tokamak effectively wants to become the sole decentralized liquidity provider across the decentralized finance ecosystem, just as Amazon Web Services revolutionized data hosting by providing on-demand cloud computing to IT businesses, Tokamak hopes to revolutionize blockchain liquidity by providing liquidity as a service to DeFi projects. Final thoughts with an af final thoughts with an actively expanding team of around 20 blockchain developers and crypto natives, Tokamak is aiming to disrupt the old unsustainable paradigm of inflation-based liquidity. Again, very technical. There's plenty of information on their website, on Medium, which is worth reading through. It's hard to grasp exactly how it works uh, without doing a bit of research or watching a few different videos. These are the notes I sort of took to summarize everything. DeFi 2.0 is new models of providing liquidity. An example of that is Tokamak. It basically does things differently to how they're done now. It solves the problem of having aggressive inflationary tokenomics, new tokens being minted to use as rewards to liquidity providers. Example projects that have 300% APYs. People come in, earn the APYs, but then they sell, you get in permanent loss, rates drop and investors leave. They use single-sided staking, eliminate impermanent loss. They optimize liquidity for constant product auto market makers. Projects are incentivized to purchase toke, buying pressure, stake your toke in the reactor. Therefore, you can decide where to push the liquidity. Benefits, impermanent loss is pushed off to the protocol and toke holders. You have to hold toke to unlock liquidity for other projects. The disadvantages, toke inflation, constant product auto market making won't be the future. So it's possible that Tokamak transitions to concentrated liquidity, but the way it's structured now might be a bit outdated. So that's something to look out for as well. So should you invest in Tokamak? Not necessarily, it does have good potential. I'd be keeping an eye on it and keep an eye on other projects that spring up and solve these liquidity problems. But by understanding Tokamak and the problems they solve, you'll be better positioned to learn about any newer and better projects that may come along or understand better any upgrades that Tokamak are doing. Market cap of 300 million. So if it gets to a billion, there's your 3X. Market rank of 2895. Now let's see what price it can get to if it becomes a top 100 crypto. 100 is QTM at the moment, $8.09. So if we type in... For it to become a top 100 crypto, you're doing a 1.65x. So that kind of explains why the price hasn't done that much. It's traded within these bands. I think for this crypto to really push into the top 50 or 20, it would need to announce some new tech or new upgrade that you can foresee it solving the liquidity issue completely into the future and no other competitors come along as well. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe because I'll be releasing a lot more crypto content this year. That will be the video for today. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time.